Hi everyone, my name is Robert Russo and I'm a rheumatologist working at BJC Health and today uh, we're going to go through a few tests associated with assessing uh, people with uh, ankylosing spondylitis. The first test we're going to take you through is the modified Schober's test and I have with me today Rachel Quatterworth who's a physiotherapist here at the practice with expertise in treating patients with ankylosing spondylitis. Rachel. Would you like to come forward and take us through how to perform a modified Schober's test? Thanks Rob. So we're going to go through the modified Schober test which is a measurement we use for ankylosing spondylitis to measure lumbar spine mobility. So here the first thing we have to do is make sure the patient is standing in the right position. So we have feet around about hip width apart which is fine here. Uh, we definitely need to see the lumbar spine. We're going to come in we have to lower the shorts a little bit so that we get onto the PSIS lines on the lumbar spine and the pelvis here. Just for purposes, I'm just going to mark that out here so we can see. Okay. From the PSIS, we come into the centre and use that as a central mark. We then have to grab a tape measure and come down five centimetres from that middle mark. Okay, and then mark that off, and then 10 centimetres above. Then what we do is ask the patient, keeping their knees straight, they aim to bend forwards to touch their toes, as far as they can go, keeping their knees straight. Then we come in and measure the distance between the top and the bottom marker. That's 21 here, so coming back up, we look at the difference of that 15 centimetres here to the 21, and that would be 6 centimetres here. Thank you very much, Rach, for showing us the modified show this test. So was that normal? So the lumbar spine movement uh, in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis, the concern would be anywhere below 5 centimetres. So in the arrow that we looked at just then, his was 6, so that's relatively normal. And is ankylosing spondylitis the only cause for restricted lumbar spine motion? Definitely not. There are a number of different causes for restricted spine, uh, lumbar spine mobility, uh, and your rheumatologist can definitely further investigate those causes. Well, thank you very much again, Raj, for showing us the modified Schober's test.